This is a roadmap for the design of an iron lung. Uh, this design is for a worst case scenario where there are no other resources available and the alternative is death. This is not a do-it-yourself project. The purpose of this presentation is to encourage responsible development of a solution. This is a roadmap describing the steps required to develop a working iron lung from existing materials. Warning. Respiratory ventilators are not toys and can damage a patient's lungs or kill the patient if not used properly. Only qualified medical personnel should be operating them or those under the direction of a qualified medical person. Positive pressure ventilators, PPVs. There are many PPV projects currently undergoing development. This is the preferred method. Many third world countries do not have the money, resources, and technology to develop or build positive pressure ventilators. PPV versus NPV, PPV are intrusive and pump air into the lungs. The air source must be clean. Negative pressure ventilators, NPVs, are non-intrusive and cause respiration by compressing and expanding the thorax and abdomen. The thorax is the chest. A clean air source is not required as no air is pumped into the lungs, which is an advantage. The iron lung concept. An iron lung is a negative pressure ventilator, an NPV. The patient rests with their body inside a large sealed tube, the iron lung, with their head outside. The air inside the air lung is cycled between a vacuum and a pressure. Air intake, taking a breath. One end of the iron lung is connected to a diaphragm or bellows. As it is pulled away from the tube, a vacuum is, cr is created inside the iron lung. This vacuum draws in air into the patient's lungs because the head is at atmospheric pressure. Exhalation, breathing out. The diaphragm is pushed into the iron lung. This increases the air pressure within. The lungs are forced closed due to the pressure difference and air is exhaled. So we have a higher pressure here. Ambient air is at a lower pressure. Advantages of an iron lung. It's a proven concept developed in the 1930s. Patients have used an iron lung for 20 to 50 years. Lower cost developed today than a PPV. Little resources are required. It's a low tech solution. No electronic control system required. And it's a simple mechanical design. Uh, outer shell resources. Uh, that is a big hurdle is what are we going to use for an outer shell? 55 gallon drums and salvage drums are readily available in several sizes and these are readily available globally. Two can be welded together to make an iron lung. They're long enough to enclose from the heel, from the fit, from the feet to the shoulder. The diameter would be sized to the patient's shoulder width. A 55 gallon drum, the inner diameter is roughly 22 and a half inches. The length is roughly 33.5. There's several different 55 gallon drum standards. A 85 gallon salvage drum, inner diameter is 26 inches and the length is 37 inches. A 110 gallon drum is 30 inches inner diameter and 40.8 inches in length roughly. We can weld two drums together. What we'll do is cut the bottom off of one drum and then we weld the two uh, pieces together, the bottom of one to the top of the other. Uh, we have a removable head end with a seal on it and we also have a solid tail end. Two, a pair of 55 gallon drums, the shoulder width is 22.5, that's the diameter, uh, and we'd have a shoulder to feet length of 67 inches approximately. This would be for a small size person or child. 85 gallon, shoulder width is 26 inches, uh, uh, shoulder to feet length is 74 inches, and that would be for a medium sized person. A 110 gallon uh, drum pair, shoulder width would be 30 inches, and shoulder to feet length would be 81.5 inches, and that would be for a large person. Uh, we'd cut an opening for the head in the lid. Uh, we would, uh, on the head end, on the lid, we'd cut an opening so the head could protrude through. The seal sleeves need to be airtight around the neck. We could use Velcro or other fastening material. It must be comfortable without ch chafing. Uh, there's a YouTube video called The Both Mechanical Re respirator 1939 part one at 56 se second mark it shows details of how to seal this 
on a patient. Creating a diaphragm, uh, we cut a, a large hole in the tail end for the diaphragm and mount with a ring of wood. Uh, we use leather, rubber, or other flexible material for the uh, uh, diaphragm. The area of the diaphragm, the stroke, and the volume of the barrel determines the pressure in the vacuum. Uh, there's a very good YouTube video called The Iron Lung and Polio by Mark Rockoff at the 4 minute and 30 second mark, 36 second mark. Um, it has a detail of how these uh, diaphragms work. Pressure and vacuum. Based on the Emerson Iron Lung, the range is a maximum of 40 centimeters of water for vacuum. This is only 0 0.569 PSI. It's very low. And a maximum of 3 centimeters of water for pressure. So the actual range, and this is uh, taken off an Emerson gauge, an operating gauge, was from 40 centimeters of water to 3 centimeters of water pressure. 55 gallon drum vacuum limits. So one of the questions is, can a, uh, uh, what is, when will a 55 gallon drum implode from a vacuum? There was a test on YouTube. Um, it was called the 55 gallon drum vacuum test. And uh, what they did is they basically started pumping uh, or vacuuming a 55 gallon drum. And what they found at 14 uh, inch mercury, which is equivalent to seven PSI, the drum collapsed. Uh, seven PSI is 12 times the maximum operating vacuum of 0 0.569 PSI. Uh, so this would need to be verified and tested for two drums welded together. One of the things we'd want to do is create a vacuum pressure gauge. A very easy way to do it is to use a, a manometer using clear hose or tubing. You basically uh, take a hose, put a loop in it, fill it up with water at atmospheric pressure, mark the zero reference, take one end of it, connect the iron lung, and the other one to atmospheric pressure. Now what happens is as uh, the pressure increases, it'll push the uh, uh, water down, and we can actually measure this in inches. Uh, when we have a vacuum, it'll suck the water up. And so we have a very simple method of measuring vacuum and pressure. Uh, reed valve and vacuum. A simple reed valve closes when the diaphragm is pulled away from the iron lung. So when we pull away, what we're doing is creating a vacuum. We have a reed valve on the outside. It's going to close. The uh, vacuum will force it close. The am amount of vacuum is determined by trained medical personnel. The stroke of the diaphragm determines the amount of vacuum applied. Baseline vacuum is 15 centimeters. Uh, the Emerson Iron Lung instruction states, for ordinary care of adults or children, a respiration depth which registers 15 centimeters, and this is centimeters of water, negative pressure on the gauge dial will be found safe and sufficient. So 15 centimeters of water uh, vacuum would be a starting point, a base point. In real life vacuum examples, there, there's YouTube videos, for example, Kansas City polio survivor is one of the last iron lung users in U.S., uh, if you watch that video, they have a shot of the uh, pressure gauge in use, and it's, and this one goes up to 18 centimeters of water. There is a second uh, YouTube video that has the last few, it's called the last few polio survivors, last of the iron lungs, and that person requires 35 centimeters of water. Uh, one of the differences is that in the first video, uh, the person was able to... Uh, uh, function without the iron lung during the day, but at night she would go in it and uh, uh, she found that she would be too tired to breathe, but at night she could go in it and sleep well. Uh, the second one, that person had been in an iron lung for uh, 50 years. Uh, valve design one is a simple reed. Uh, this is an example of creating a, a very simple reed valve um, with uh, basic materials. Uh, basically, what you have to do is start with a, a flat surface, uh, cut a hole in it. Uh, um, then what you use is cork, rubber, or leather and make a gasket. On top of the gasket, you put a, a sheet of plastic to stiffen it up. And then you staple um, on one side the, uh, the cork and the plastic over top of the hole here. Um, what I've done in sample uh, uh, 
uh, valves that I've made have actually glued a nut on top of this to put a little bit more weight on it. Uh, second valve design is that you can do a simple check valve. There are many do-it-yourself check valve designs available on the internet. Uh, an example is how to make a one-way check valve for cheap. Uh, size is critical and will affect the pressure settings. Pressure in iron lung and valve sizing. From earlier YouTube videos of live operation of iron lungs, the working pressure ap appears to be 2.5 centimeters of water. So what we'll see is that uh, if you watch the pressure gauge, it will shoot up to 35 centimeters for the one gentleman, and then it'll drop down to two and a half uh, inches of, of water or centimeters of water for uh, pressure, and then it'll go to a vacuum of 35 and back and forth. Uh, the other lady, uh, what it did is it went up to 18 uh, centimeters of water for vacuum, and then it went down to two and a half, uh, or up to two and a half uh, centimeters of water for pressure. Uh, the valve physical opening will determine how fast the chamber releases pressure and ultimately the peak pressure in the chamber. So basically, uh, the physical opening size will determine how fast that ch chamber releases pressure, and it'll also in indicate the peak pressure in the chamber. If it's a spring-loaded uh, valve, what could happen is that um, it has to reach a certain pressure of 1 psi or before it opens, or it wouldn't be one PSI, that would be too high. Uh, it'd be one centimeter of water before it opens, or two, two centimeters of water. Uh, this must be determined and should be an adjustable option, or orifice. Uh, valve operation with pressure, what happens is that as the diaphragm passes the neutral point, what it does is starts applying pressure into the chamber. Uh, as the pressure mounts, what happens, the valve will release uh, air, and then what will happen is that uh, it will return the chamber to atmospheric pressure. Adjustable orifices. Uh, simple plate to reduce the size of the opening. What you can do is make a box over the reed valve, and then what you do is you make a sliding plate over a hole in the box, and this will change the size of the orifice opening here, and we can tune the, the uh, characteristics of the iron lung using this way. Another way is if uh, you can use a crank operated valve such as you'd find in, in plumbing uh, if it meets the uh, right requirements and that. And again this is something that would have to be tested and developed. Required control mechanisms based on Emerson Iron Lung. Uh, very first one is you have to change the respiration rate. Respiration rate should be adjustable from 12 to 24 breaths per minute. Uh, it should have a pressure gauge. You should be able to change the respiration depth to a, a maximum of minus 40 centimeters of water, of maximum vacuum. Uh, it should have an adjustment for positive pressure uh, up to plus three centimeters of water for pressure. Again, uh, all of these values uh, should be peer reviewed uh, by medic qualified medical personnel. The respiration rate is controlled by the cadence of the diaphragm movement and how often is one cycle repeated. So one cycle is from pushing all the way in, which would be pressured, to pulling all the way out, um, which would be vacuum, and that would be one cycle. It should be adjustable from 12 to 24 breaths per minute. Pressure gauge, we talked about it before. Uh, pressure gauge is a simple solution as a manometer. Uh, we can use just clear hose and water, and we can... Uh, um, have a gauge that we can determine what the pressure and vacuum is in the iron lung. Respiration depth adjusted by the outward stroke of movement of the diaphragm. So when we pull on the diaphragm, we create a va vacuum. How far we pull will determine how much uh, vacuum we make. Right? And the vacuum is measured in uh, centimeters of water. So we talked about one lady that she required 18 centimeters of, uh, of water for vacuum. So what we do is we pull it out to about here. Another one required 35, we'd have to pull it out farther. Positive pressure, uh, it's adjusted by the valve release pressure and the orifice side. Um, Pause of three centimeters of water maximum for pressure, and that would have to be verified by the medical uh, personnel that is an expert in this area. Diaphragm 
mechanism requires a lever that can be hand and foot operated and alternatively powered by a mechanical motor of some type. Emerson recommends two to three minute shifts for persons hand cranking. So crank for two to three minutes, another person comes on and then you share the cranking as you get the uh, proper cadence and then the other person steps off for rest. A diaphragm motor suggestions. The RPM of the motor's output should be adjustable from 12 to 24 RPM to coincide with the breaths per minute to push the diaphragm lever. It can be an electric controlled gearbox motor. Uh, it could be the output of a motor vehicle or motorcycle drive wheel. It will spin the rear wheels in the 12 to 24 RPM range when in the transmission's first gear. This power source could feed multiple iron lungs. So as an example here, what you could do is put a, a drive shaft onto the uh, drive wheel in this case, and then you could feed uh, multiple uh, iron lungs if required. A drive to the diaphragm lever uh, can be a simple wooden disc crank, as in this example here, we have a simple wooden disc crank, and then we have uh, a crank on here. And we can have multiple fastening points to change the stroke, which will change the respiration depth. Patient care, the iron lung should be elevated at working height. The patient should be laying on a padded sliding platform with wheels at the front. Uh, in this uh, picture you can't see, but there's actually casters on the bottom, so this can slide out. Uh, the patient's bed position, so the shoulders are at the widest diameter of the iron lung in this position. The patient's head should be supported naturally. Uh, this could be made out of two by fours or wood. This could be a, a plywood padded bed on here. An alternative outer shell resource is construction concrete tube forms. Uh, they're available in many diameters from 24 inches and up. Standard lengths are 12 feet. The cardboard material may not survive in human climates and may be a source of contamination. Uh, their testing is required to determine if they can support the vacuum. Um, I have been in contact with sauna tube. Uh, um, they feel that the cardboard can be made to uh, support a vacuum. Uh, their response was we can produce sauna tubes with a polyethylene at polyurethane inside coating with a poly or PET outer surface. And they would be willing to customize a tube to potentially meet your medical requirements. Summary, this, presentation, uh, this presentation is to encourage the development of a low cost, simple technical solution for a negative pressure ventilation system that can be used when all other resources have failed and the alternative is death. It is targeted for developing countries that do not have the money, resources, infrastructure, and technology to build PPVs. I have created this presentation because I do not have the abilities, resources, or facilities to take it to the next level. Warning, respirator ventilators are not toys and can damage a patient's lungs or kill the patient if not used properly. Only qualified medical personnel should be operating them or those under the direction of a qualified medical person. I want to uh, thank uh, the Pandemic Ventilation Design Team, uh, University of Calgary, University of Alberta Biomed Lab Initiative. A uh, special thanks to uh, Mark Ungren and their work on the uh, NPV based on the Emerson jacket respirator.